is Savardis. He's on the move, and they're going to look for Savardis in the corner. Touchdown! Rowan heading for the touch pad with the lead, and the props will take the men's 400-yard freestyle relay. Andrews will be in shotgun. He takes the snap, makes the handoff. They'll throw it down the left sideline. He's going to wide up a receiver. He's got the touchdown. Okay, moving in. Central on goal, and he scores! And it is a power play goal! Back to pass, middle of the field. The catch is made by Britt. She's off to the races at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. Britt is in for the score. Back on in, here's Yoxin. Yoxin to the back end, trying to go to the front. Makes the move, a shot, and he scores! Smith delivers. And that's it back toward the mound. Weiss has it in short. He steps on second, and the ball game is over. Massapequa Coast has won the 2023 New York State Little League Baseball Championship. Live from Hamiline Field at Wagner College in Staten Island, New York, PDF Sports Network is proud to welcome you into coverage of kickoff to the United Premier Soccer League Division II season as a pair of teams take the field for the first time in their organization's history. Today's matchup is Soap Football Company taking on the Elite Players Center 2 team. Hello, everyone. I'm David Pizzuto of the PDF Sports Network, flying solo this afternoon, but with the promise of being joined by some special guests along the way as we get set to bring you a historic matchup, the first ever game in Soap FC football history and what is a new look into the UPSL this season, something we will talk about a great deal more here as we have about 15 to 20 minutes to go until kickoff here live from Wagner College, home of the 2024 Soap FC football season. So we have a lot to talk about as we get set for kickoff of the 2024 season. But before we get to breaking down the 90-minute matchup in store for us today, let's take an in-depth look at the UPSL itself in the event you are unfamiliar with the league. As you can see on your screen, the UPSL is the premier amateur soccer league in the United States, and they are everywhere. Over 400 teams and players from just about every level of soccer coming together and at all competitive levels. You can see on your screen three major tiers of UPSL soccer. Of course, the Premier League is where the top national teams make their home. They're battling for Gold Cup and National Championship honors, followed by Division I, where teams go back and forth with advancement. And now, for the first time ever, a new Division II tier in 2024, specific to Northeast soccer, which now has a Division I and a Division II separation. And we will see it now on your screen, 59 total teams in two divisions encompass Northeast America teams within the UPSL. The top 18 teams playing in Premier, followed by 24 teams in Division I, and now, for the first time, 17 teams in Division II. Two teams from each division can now move up and down the tiers, be it through advancement or relegation. And today's game between Soap FC and EPC2 is a battle between two of those Division II teams and our two of 13 total teams playing in the North Division. And we take a look now at those teams in the North. Coming up on your screen, you could see Soap FC and the Elite Players Center 2 Two of those 13 new teams comprising Division II's North Division. And so in many ways, it's an historical game here today, the first in many ways. And it's a division where every game is huge because an advancement into Division I is on the line. And you can see now coming up on your screen how things work in Division II. Coming up in just a moment, we will see that every team plays 12-game regular season, every team will play every other team one time. Teams earn three points for a win, and there is no overtime in regular season play, so draws earn one point after 90 minutes. The team that finishes in first place at the end of the season wins the Division II North crown and an automatic entry into Division I next year. And then the teams that finish second through seventh will play in a postseason tournament to determine one other team that will advance to Division I next year, replacing, of course, the teams that finished in the last two spots in Division I. Those two teams will move down to Division 
Division II. So, so much on the line today for sure. And as far as the matchup itself, well, there's really not a lot to say. This matchup here at Wagner is the first ever tilt between these two sides. It's the first game ever period for these two teams and as far as elite player center well they have two teams that play in the UPSL both teams making their debut this season their number one team plays in division one currently as far as soap FC this is their one and only squad but they have big plans and we will hear a lot more about those big plans as we go so that gives you Pretty good introduction to what we have in store for you today and throughout the season. But admittedly, we don't have a great deal of preview to give to you. No results, no stats, no history between these teams. So it makes sense that we would need to hear directly from the teams themselves to find out exactly what to expect. So let's do that now. A little bit earlier, I was field side and caught up with our two coaches in today's game to get a better feel for what to expect in this game and things to keep in mind. So let's hear now from Soap FC headman Arlen Stafage. All right, I am down here on field side with head coach Arlen Stafage. Coach, great mindset coming into this first game. Obviously, mm -hmm. a long, a long way getting here, getting the team together. Of course, training. But you know, how does it feel to finally be on the pitch now, playing your first game? I think uh, everybody's very excited. We've been working hard. It's been several months now that we started uh, preparing for this. So, you know, something to look forward to this first game of the season. Absolutely. And, you know, it's the first time we're getting a look at your team, first time the people mm -hmm. at home are getting a look at your team. So we don't really know much about your team yeah. coming into this game. If Soap FC is playing the kind of game that it wants to play, what does that look like on the field? I think we are a possession-based team. We would like to have the ball as much as we can. And if we do not have the ball, we try to get it back as quickly as possible. So the higher up we win the ball, the better it is for us. And, and once we do win it, create situations instead of forcing the ball through. Absolutely. And, you know, we haven't seen, you know, much of your team at all this season. We also haven't seen much of your opponents at all. What are some of the expectations uh, as far as your opponent is concerned, type of team, makeup they are, and what's going to take to beat them here today? Yeah, I think um, that it's supposed to be a very strong opponent. They come from Brooklyn. They have a variety of players to choose from. They have a big team. They have two teams. So um, it will be a tough game. I think it's all about patience. But as long as we're patient, uh, we control the ball the way we want. So I think we should be able to do what we uh, are supposed to do. Excellent. And, and final question, Coach, as far as, you know, putting the team together, getting the, the guys organized and really creating the team from scratch, some of the things that you were looking for as, as head coach, uh, as far as the makeup of the team mm -hmm. and the kind of guys you wanted to bring together? Uh, for me, the most important thing is attitude uh, and commitment. As long as, you'll be, as, as long as you can be here, you know, we can work on all the tactically, the little things you need and technically develop things that you are lacking. Everything else builds up from that attitude, mentality and we move forward. Excellent. Coach Stafaj, good luck today. Thank you. Absolutely. That was Coach Stafaj here of the uh, SOAP FC team. We'll uh, send it back upstairs, and when we come back, we'll get a player on as well. Great stuff there from SOAP FC Coach Stafaj, but the players on SOAP FC are also amped and excited for today's matchup. A little earlier, I was joined by SOAP FC's number 10, Brian Bustos, and here's what he had to say in the minutes leading up to his debut game against EPC2. All right, back down here on the field with Soap FC player Brian Bustos. Brian, uh, excitement level here for the first game. What's it like these last couple of months training with the team and now coming in for your first game? Yeah, we've been we've been working hard for the past like six months. So, you know, it's very exciting to just finally get out on the field and have a first game of the season. You know, everybody's been working really hard, so I'm excited for what the, the game's going to be like. Excellent. And you mentioned training for the last six months or so. Tell me a little bit about what that process is like, especially with a brand new team like Soap FC, a lot of different personalities coming together. Tell me a little bit about that process. So um, we were very fortunate to get like really talented players. You know, everybody's dedicated. They show up to practice. Everybody's there four days a week. You know, it's, it's not easy, but I give props to everybody. We all put in the work. I think we all we all know the potential we have to really do something special for Staten Island. So I'm, I'm excited again. Yeah. And speaking of doing something special, what would you like to see the team do here today on the pitch? If you guys are playing the game your way, what does that look like? So a lot of possession, holding the ball, um, a lot of patience. You know, soccer is a sport. You really got to be patient. You got to move your opponents around. So that's really all we've been working on is, you know, really just um, – Everybody literally getting involved as much as possible, keeping it a 
calm game, everybody having fun, enjoying every every moment on the field, you know. All right, final question for you, Brian, as far as you personally, you know, are concerned. What are some of the things that you like to do on the pitch? You know, your create your creativity. What are you planning to do here today in these 90 minutes? Um, honestly, you know, so maybe hopefully score a couple goals, one goal, whatever it is, help the team get the W. You know, just have fun, enjoy it for real. Yeah. Brian Bustos, we might hold him to that. A couple of goals, perhaps, is what he's looking for. Brian, thanks a lot for joining us. Good luck today. All right, that was Brian Bustos from Soap FC. We're going to send it back upstairs when we come back. We'll talk to Soap's, Soap FC's opponents, EPC2, coming up next. Certainly a great deal of excitement for coaches and players for Soap FC, and we will see how that transfers over to the pitch in real gameplay in just a few short minutes. Of course, the team that stands in their way, the Elite Player Center 2, they'll have a bit to say about the great start Soap FC wants to get off to, and for a look inside their side, we caught up with their coach, Atiba Downs. Let's go down to Coach Downs. Okay, here with Coach Downs here for the Elite Player Center 2 t uh, squad. They're getting set to face off against Soap FC and Coach Downs. Uh, I asked Coach Stafaj the same question on the other side. Tell me a little bit about the excitement level coming into this first game, getting the UPSL season started. Yeah, I, I feel like it's been a very long time, you know, trying to get to this game. But um, we've been excited from day one because uh, I think the competition, the competition against Soap FC is, is a really good one. And I think we're going to expect to have some good, play against some really good teams this year. You know, I have players who, who who didn't sleep much last night, just being that excited to come out to play today. You know, so again, we've been waiting for this day. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. And, you know, we haven't, obviously, we haven't seen much of your team at all. We don't really know what to expect. But tell me, as, as a coach and trainer of this team, if your team is playing well, what is it doing well? Um, if we're playing well, we're definitely, well, firstly, they're listening to us as coaches mm -hmm. and we're definitely maintaining the ball. We like, we like holding on to the ball and building the play. We like more or less controlling the pace of the game. And so if we're playing well, we're definitely doing both of those things. Excellent. And as far as your opponents, of course, first time we're seeing Soap FC again. How do you kind of train your guys and build up a game plan to take down a team that you really haven't seen before? Yeah. No, no. But if I'm being honest, we played a couple friendlies against them. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're a really good team. Um, we've looked at tape on, on this team. And so we're going to try our best to, to stop them from playing the game. And uh, we, we're going to exploit what we think are some of their weaknesses. Excellent. Well, uh, Coach Downs, uh, congratulations on getting to this point here to kick off the season. Good luck in today's game and along the way. Thank you. Thank you Excellent. very much. That was Coach Downs from EPC2 getting set for a good one here for the next 90 minutes. We'll send it back upstairs. No better way to intro a contest than hearing from the teams themselves. And we have a pretty good sense now of what to expect in this one and what both teams want to do. Can they put it all together on the field of play? We will find out in just a few short minutes. With that in mind, let's step out for a few moments, get you caught up with a word from our sponsors when we come back. Opening kickoff between Soap FC and EPC2, only on your home for Soap FC football, the PDF Sports Network. Attention local businesses and professionals. Isn't it time to elevate your game? Now you can advertise your business or product on PDF Sports Network. Your ad will appear on all of our broadcasts, including this one. Don't have a commercial? We'll make one for you, absolutely free. What better way to showcase your product and brand while supporting the best local sports, teams, and leagues? Call now at 732-723-8189 or visit us at pdfsportsnet.com. Starting April 7th, indeed, and that's today, of course, the kickoff to our spring and summer schedule here on the PDF Sports Network. We thank you for joining us. As we get set here, both teams have lined up and have exchanged pleasantries with our officiating crew and our referees, and now we'll get set for the opening whistle here. Starters were not introduced, however... We can tell you that Soap FC will be going from left to right on your screen. They're in their red and black kits, black stockings. And for EPC2, they will be in their road white jerseys with the royal blue trimmings and the royal blue socks as well. And they will go, of course, from right to left. As soon as we hear that whistle, we will get things started here. And the opening game of the UPSL season and the opening game 
in organization's history for both of these teams. And we are underway, and immediately it is won by EPC2, controlled by Kante. And we have our first whistle here, as we will have a foul whistled against EPC2. Over the course of the game, we'll look to get you some stats as well. I'll be doing that by hand here in the booth, but look to do the best job that we can for you. As well as with our rosters that, of course, are still materializing and still coming together. Danny Villa controls and does get it back here on the back line for Soap FC, and he gives it up to Roberts there on the back line. They'll work it up to center of the pitch. Jove plays it back. EPC 2's roster, we didn't really receive it until about five minutes before we went on the air. Had their names, but got their jerseys distributed here this afternoon. And so get their first look at them. Down the right sideline, Carlos Montesinos puts one in front and centered and swept out of the box. Good job there for Soap to get the early chance there in front. And good job defensively by EPC2. Converging on it, Soap sends it right back in. Halfway into the offensive zone and working with it is Baldaris. And they sweep it back now, Al Haj, all the way back to Roberts. Roberts wants to play it. Back in goal where Michael Arcuri makes the start. He surveys, fakes out and now moves it over to his left. Now, we did tell you, obviously, this is the first meeting between these two teams all time, but these two teams did scrimmage a couple of times during the preseason leading up. Heard from Coach Downs about that as well, and so they have gotten different looks between one another. Swept all the way across the field, the black line, which is kind of faint here, from our vantage point is the sideline, so can get a little bit confusing. Meanwhile, the giveaway there in the middle of the field was collected by Fall. He tried to sweep it over to his right in the direction of Diallo, but it was broken up. Past midfield they go, another foul here whistled against EPC. They've had the first two whistles here called against them. Should mention that the time on your screen that you're looking at is unofficial. The official time will be kept on the field, so we will keep a running clock for you here on our scoreboard. However, official time kept on the field, and we'll refer to that a little later on. Getting past the defense was Baldaris. No flag was up, but right into the waiting arms of Mendel Benjamin, who gets to start here for EPC2 in between the pipes. And he plays it quickly up ahead. McGinnis with a touch, taken off the ball by Montesino, spilled out of bounds, but Soap will have possession. So we might have a timeout, and looks like perhaps a talking to here by the official over on the far side. Actually, it's an equipment issue. It's like Diallo had to get a knee pad in or a shin guard in, but he's all set and we reset. And that's exactly what Soap FC wants to do here as they start over again. Back line. Acevedo playing it across over on the far sideline there. Number's a little bit difficult to pick up on that side of the field, but Giove plays it out of bounds as we have an injured Soap player down. And it looks like it was num number 17, Mohamed Cade. Mohamed Cade will have to come out of the game and will have to get the referee's attention to come back in. He is waiting right there at midfield. And Soap once again resets. You know, both coaches came in saying that they wanted to win the possession game. 
something that Coach Stafage and Coach Downs both made mention of. And right now, Soap FC has controlled things predominantly here. Acevedo, a little too strong in the direction of Lysashenko out of bounds, and EPC will take over. Beautiful afternoon here at Hamline Field at Wagner College. A little brisk if you're out there in the stands. Great crowd has collected in front of us. But for the players on the pitch, this is just about picture perfect here. Nice and cool. Keeps the players cool as they do their sprints up and down the field. Crystal clear otherwise. Soap FC getting to the 50-50 ball, and they opt to play it backwards there. Roberts wants the reverse field and finds Baldaris. Once again, a reset on the back line. Roberts comfortably in control, reverses field. Lysashenko gets it back after checking back into the game. And they'll reset once more. All the way back now to our Curie. And we heard Brian Busto say it in the pregame as well. Teams training just about six months getting to this point in the season. And you could do the math. Six months ago was October. So these two teams throughout the winter getting together, sometimes in frigid temperatures and trying to establish some team camaraderie leading up to this initial game in a season that will carry all the way to June. And at least 12 games over the course of 13 weeks. Every team in Division II gets a bye at some point during the season. Soap actually gets theirs next week. So they are off for two weeks after this game, and they'll pick back up on April 20th, the weekend of April 20th and 21st. That one all the way in the middle of the field, but the only one home is Benjamin, who plays it on the line. With hands raised was Bustos there in the middle of the field. He wanted a better ball to him. Meanwhile, EPC will take over here. McGinnis with a touch, try to get it towards midfield, and working his body on the ball and winning possession was Conte, and spilled out of bounds. Throw in in favor of EPC two. Played underneath, lost the ball. And taking over was Jove. Jove, no choice but to pull back. And Roberts plays it over to Arcuri as he was backpedaling there a little awkwardly. Pass almost intercepted, but worked back to Acevedo. And out of bounds, they will have the throw in. No shots yet in this game, officially. Probably the best chance came in the opening minute. A Carlos Montesinos cross, low line cross into the box was swept out by the defense. Here's a good chance here for Kante. Wins that one, 1v1, one one, but enough time elapsed where Soap FC were able to get a couple of defenders back and sweep up that chance. First foul whistled against Soap FC. And a chance here, first free kick of the afternoon for EPC2, EPC C2. And a chance for them to get one deeper into the box here. Jude Duplan will tee it up here from, you can see the yard line just inside the 35. Right footed low lining kick. First converged on by Soap, but Deplan gets it back, but sees it roll out of bounds harmlessly. And Soap FC will be able to get numbers to show for Alhaj. Plays it up the field. Archampon with one of his first touches, but it's won by EPC2. Good piece of passing there. And on the run is Baldaris. Baldaris with a head of steam. And it is swept out and out of play beyond the goal line. So we'll have our first corner kick of the afternoon for Soap FC. Just under 10 minutes in here. Great ball from Bustos to Baldaris to get that sprung. First corner of the game, first corner of the season 
for Soap FC. I believe that's Acevedo who's taking it. Good ball, center of the box. First foot on it was Hackett's to draw it out. Flared out to the sideline. They battle there, and finally the ball out of play, and it will be a throw-in in favor of Soap. Learned that we should get a visit from one of Soap's ad top administrators. Mr. John Tardy will join us a little bit later in the broadcast, perhaps. Looking forward to speaking with John and really dissecting his brain and getting to the bottom of, of course, Soap's moniker and the organization's focus here through this UPSL Division II season and what's in store and what's ahead. Soap FC, the Soap Football Company, of course, just getting started here on Staten Island. Great venture for John Tardy, Alex Cuba, and the rest of the staff here with Soap FC. We're going to learn a lot more about their organization, hopefully be with them throughout the season. Here's another good springing ball, and unable to catch up to it in time was Lysashenko. This will be a goal kick in favor of EPC2. And we did mention it during the opener Opening as well, EPC2, or the Elite Player Center, with two teams in UPSL. Their top team, their one team plays in Division One. This is their Division Two team, and we could see some players shifting rosters throughout the season as well. One of the questions I plan to ask John Tardy is whether or not Soap will think about perhaps putting another team out there in UPSL beyond this season. We'll see. Baldaris controls, and in the middle of things, they find an open Giove, but Soap FC wants to reverse field. Roberts with a quick touch up the sideline, Al Haj. Baldaris swept off the ball, out of play. Defensive play made by McGinnis. Welcome those of you who just joined us here at the start of kickoff. We had an extended pregame here. We learned a lot more about these two teams. Of course, spoke to both coaches. and Soap FC forward Brian Bustos joined us as well. And he says, best case scenario, love to punch in a goal or two. We're looking for our first shot on goal of the game here as we are into the double-digit mark in this game. Of course, two 45-minute periods separated by halftime. There is no overtime here, so if the teams draw after 90 minutes, it will go down as a draw. Both teams will earn one point in the standings. And every game a big one when you understand the top two teams with a chance to advance into Division I in 2025. So the season will play out with a lot of excitement here throughout. Far side of the field. It is Bustos who will get into this one. Gets a right leg into it. Low liner. Does take a hop. EPC gets to it first. Bustos got railroaded off the ball. That time, big collision. Both guys get up. And Villacris tries to put one over top of the defense and meeting it at the top of the box is Arcuri. Nice job and nice placement in the box by Arcuri. No harm done. Good chance, though, on the counterattack that time. All developing after the free kick for Soap FC. Good move in the middle of the field. Drawing away the defense, and here comes Soap FC down the left sideline. Quick entry pass into Bustos. No choice but to spill it out. Looks like we will have our second corner kick here of the afternoon in favor of Soap FC. Taking it will be Lysashenko. Gets a right foot into it. Again, low liner, and that one is headed well over everything. Looks like Montesinos might have gotten the head on it. Counted as our first shot of the game. Not a shot on goal, obviously. Big pressure here and a big turnover. The other way, Lysashenko 
gets pulled down. Foul whistled here against EPC2. But here's a great moment here and a great opportunity. Very hard to distinguish the 18 yard box here on Wagner's field. But from right beyond it, a great opportunity here. Bustos and Lysashenko are discussing it. We'll see who gets the touch on it. And if it's put immediately on goal. Bustos walks over it. Lysashenko, low liner, can't get it through the wall. And EPC2 comes out the other way with a head of steam. Pass was interrupted by Roberts. He works in the middle of the field. No one home there. No one making that run on the far sideline. So there to meet it will be Benjamin, and they'll reset things. 16 minutes into half number one. Soap FC, slight edge in possession. And we've certainly played a lot more on this side of the field, but pretty good defensively on both sides. Almost a great takeaway there by LaFleur, but Soap FC able to double back, get out of danger. Here's a tough challenge there against our Curie. He is able to get it through. Get the sense that EPC2 are going to rely on that counterattack and their speed in the middle of the field, try to generate a turnover and get a scoring chance. Short throw in, Baldaris getting swept off the ball by Villacrest and Baldaris gets whistled for the foul. Three fouls for EPC, two for Soap in this first third of the half. Julie the plan will get into this one. Puts it right in the middle of the field. Red jerseys are there. Acevedo with the touch on it. Kick back to Giove, and Giove plays it back even further. They work it on the far sideline. Lysashenko, the touch, backwards to Acevedo. Gives way to Arcuri, and they'll reset and play it over on the near side of Roberts. Roberts very active on that back line so far in this first half. Back and forth they go. Middle of the pitch. Once again, Roberts finds it. Played up, Alhaj. Alhaj gets it back, turns towards goal, gives over to Balderas. Quick give and go, and Balderas is racing down the right sideline. Balderas hesitates, has Alhaj behind him, elects to get it in the middle of the field. Lysashenko. Sweeps off one defender, he plays it back. Acevedo to the sideline. And unable to control, that time was Cade, and EPC comes out the other way. Given up in the middle of the pitch, and we have another foul here whistled against Soap FC. Wind picking up here, you can hear it in our outdoor microphone under the cover of full shade for the first time in this first half. That one lifted right to the lip of the box. Bicycle kick was partially hit on and so kicks it all the way out. And resetting will be EPC. McGinnis with the first touch plays it back to Deplan. Deplan in the middle of the field. Conte sweeping shot was blocked in front. Now EPC looking to reverse field. Bacara had a touch on it, but it's taken away by Soap FC. Montesinos now working one against two defenders here. Hesitates, waits for his troops to catch up. Montesinos looking in the middle of the field and does find Achampong. Achampong with a long lifting shot that is wide and high over the bar. Still a good thought. Soap's second shot of the game, second shot that's gone high and over, but that one tested them and saw a little bit of Soap FC's counterattack for the first time in this game. 
Nice job by Montesinos to set that one up. Shoulder to shoulder, Roberts looking to ward off LaFleur and does. Roberts gains shy of midfield, but intercepted there. Bustos gets it back. They reset to Acevedo. Good movement here by Mohamed Cade. He spilled down, but not before he gets it towards the sideline of Bustos. Bustos looking to gain the box. Bustos sidestepping one defender. Tries to shrug away another. We have a couple of bodies down now. Mohamed Cade still down near the 35-yard line. Soap FC has now taken the lead and fouls whistled against them with four. 21st minute of play here in a quick moving first half. We haven't had a lot of stops and starts in this one. But we do remind you that official time is being kept on the field, so there will be some stoppage time at the 45-minute mark. Quick touch by Roberts, but it is lost, and the entry pass or lead pass is too strong. And Soap FC able to collect. Baldaris allowed to lift his head and play with some space. Montesinos, nice sidestep of Bakara. Gets it over to the far sideline, Lysyshenko. Lysyshenko back to Montesinos. Montesinos allowed to survey. Ops out to Jove. Jove plays it the opposite way to Alhaj. Alhaj with the defense bearing down on him. Gets it over to Baldaris. Baldaris. The pass was intercepted and kicked promptly out of play by McGinnis. But Soap FC gets to redo it a little farther up the field. Alhaj losing it, but it does go out of bounds. So Pepsi continues to control and now pretty overwhelming advantage in possession at this point. EPC has not really been creative with the ball at their feet much. Al Haj continues to control, tries to get through a defender, can't do it. McGinnis was there to help out Kante. And once again, the EPC two, two team fails to get it out. No score here, first half. There have been no shots on goal yet. But Soap knocking on the door, mounting their offense up. They have the 2-0 lead in shots. We have not had a shot on goal yet. Acevedo, missed time pass, is intercepted, and now they go the other way. Skied up into the middle of the field. A couple of weird bounces there on this Wagner turf, but Soap is able to control. Jonathan Baldaris, again with some space on the right side. He's looking for some help. Ops back out to Alhaj. Alhaj backs things up to Roberts. Definitely see Soap FC a little bit deliberate now with their movement of the ball swaying from side to side. Perhaps trying to frustrate this EPC two team as they work it all the way back to Arcuri who's way out of his goal comes, it at, comes out of it to Roberts Roberts plays it over to his left forcing EPC2 to move back and forth that defensive line swaying from right to left Lysyshenko given some space now making the run is Bustos kind of a Short pass there, never reached its mark. And they battle on the opposite side, but Lysyshenko able to win it back. And Cade will get the throw in. Cade wants to play it back and does successfully to Acevedo. Yields to Jove and now back to Acevedo. That one out of play. Got to give credit to EPC2 defensively. They have really bottled up the passing lanes for Soap FC. Soap FC have been able to be creative with the ball on their feet, but they really just haven't been able to complete that last pass in that last third of the field. And although Soap has had the overwhelming possession here, EPC2 really not letting them in to that final third of the field. And we'll see which team blinks first or makes the first mistake. 
as we approach 25 minutes into the first half. Another giveaway there for Soap and on the opposite side, LaFleur giving chase. Trying to get bodied off the ball by Montesinos. He has to retreat. Montesinos wins another one at midfield. Nice job. And they work it across the field to Baldaris. Jonathan Baldaris, very active here on the near sideline. Does play it back to Al Haj. And they play it all the way back to Arcuri. Acevedo. Given a lot of room until he reaches midfield. Now he gets bodied off the ball, and we will have a whistle. Not happy with the call. Was EPC 2. That was Max Nilkins LaFleur, who was whistled for the foul. And got a quick little talking to for the head referee. Meanwhile, this is Villacris. And he spilled down, and Villacris now peels himself up. And they'll reset once again. More heavy play, and this will be another foul whistled against EPC2. Both teams getting a little bit more physical here in this last minute and a half. Both teams with five fouls here in this first half. Statistically a dead heat so far just about in this game. Soap FC has had the only two attempts at goal, neither one of them on goal. They've also had two corner kicks in this game. EPC, two, looking for their first measured offense. Al Haj sees that one go over his boot and out of play. Abdul Rahman wanted a little bit more from that one. Frustrated with himself there as EPC, two. Gives it away. Baldaris, middle of the field. That pass intercepted. Baldaris with a nice challenge and wins the ball that goes off of the leg of Deplan. They back up. And Roberts will restart things inside of midfield. Acevedo. The other way. Cade. Lysyshenko. Lysyshenko. Shoulder to shoulder here. McGinnis has to retreat. Montesinos. Long run for Bustos, and that ball spilled right out. Nice job by Bustos to bear down on that. Earn a throw in the final third of the field. Bustos gets it back. Works it with Cade. Cade looking middle of the field. Finds Giove. Across. Lysyshenko. Baldaris. Looks like Baldaris switched, switched positions with Al Haj. Now they go in the middle of the field. That one is headed up. Settled down. Would be chance for Lysyshenko. He was taken off the ball. EPC wants to reverse. Unable to. And here comes Soap the other way again. Bustos. Long range shot. And that one's just wide. Good attempt by Brian Bustos. Probably the best Shot taken of the game, and Mendel Benjamin had good positioning on it in goal and sees it go wide. Nice attempt at goal there. We approach the 29-minute mark. And that one ricochets off of a couple of players right into the waiting arms of Mendel Benjamin, you're watching USPL Division II Northeast American Conference Northeast Division. Soap FC against EPC2. First game of the season for both sides. Nice job by McGinnis. Looked to slide it through two defenders. Could not do so. EPC continues to control, and that one is put on goal. Very weak shot by Abdu Diallo. Not sure if that was considered a pass or not, but either way, it was on goal. No trouble for our Curie, and here comes Soap the other way. Midfield, Lysyshenko. Look to weave it into the middle of the field. We do have a whistle. 
Lysyshenko not happy as he peels himself off the turf. Sixth foul whistled against EPC2 in this one. See if Soap can come up with something here on this free kick. They've had a couple here, and they've opted to work them short, and they do once again here. That one skied up and into the hands of Mendel Benjamin. Good positioning again. Benjamin had the arms raised and interrupts that would-be attempt. EPC, middle of the field. That one goes off of the official, I believe. Referee and actually ricocheted off of a couple. And looks like this ball will be put down and played immediately by EPC2. Final 15 minutes or so remaining in this first half. Reminder that official time is being kept on the field. We will stop the clock when it hits 45 and they'll play extra time from there. Arcuri plays it from Roberts, and Arcuri really has not been tested at all for Soap FC, other than really playing it back and forth from his defenders. Although statistically, EPC with the only shot on goal of the game, it was a very weak one on what very well could have been just a lead pass into the box that never hit home. Arshim Pong still working, is able to turn away. McGinnis still working, 1v2, comes out with it again. Crowd appreciates the effort being made by Arshim Pong. But EPC the other way is able to win one back. Montesinos is able to defend away that ball. Nice pass over to Bustos. Lysyshenko in the middle. And that pass goes through everything and settled down by Benjamin. Another good developing offensive chance for Soap FC. They're not able to measure it into a shot. But all developed over that turnover. And great job by Gideon Archimpong to really get things started on that last drive. Skied up. Middle of the pitch, played first by Acevedo, and now it's Cade. Lysyshenko, and as they've done pretty much all first half, Soap FC wants to change directions, and they'll do so and start it off with Roberts. Roberts going across, dangerous pass. Didn't have a lot on it. I don't think Roberts got what he wanted out of it. And so, Soap FC resets. Cade, given a lot of space, gives it over to Lysyshenko, who plays it promptly back. It's really what EPC2 has been doing, is they've really allowed Soap the first half of the field pretty much unimpeded. But once Soap FC has gotten it into the EPC side of the field, that's when the Passing lanes have gotten a little tighter. And as much as they've lost the possession battle here, EPC2 doing a good job defensively. Not allowing too much in front of Benjamin. That pass again intercepted and spilled right back into Soap side. Acevedo playing it to the opposite side. This is Cade. Cade in the middle. Montesinos opts back to Cade. It's a short pass intercepted at first, and it takes Acevedo's challenge, spilling it out of bounds. Acevedo with the quick throw in. It gets it back via the reset here. Slow, methodical play here by Soap FC, but they are winning the possession battle. Good first touch, and it's played backwards. Roberts, middle of the field. That one was partially deflected and 
50-50 ball ends up on the foot of Alhaj. Alhaj to Baldaris. Baldaris gets shouldered off the ball. Good defensive play by McGinnis. Now he's got to do something with it. McGinnis able to get away from Baldaris, but Baldaris takes it away. Gets it on the give and go with Archimpong. Gains the goal line, tries to put it in the middle of play. Archimpong plays while he's down and can't control enough until EPC2 able to do a good job defensively to converge on that one. Another good developing offensive chance for Soap FC, unable to come get anything as a result of it. Now played the other way, LaFleur. Plays it back to Diallo. Diallo with the only shot of the game so far. Very weak one that came in on a bouncer to our Curie. Bakara playing it backwards now. First time we've really seen EPC2 completely set up in Soap's end. There's a long lead pass. The flag was up for offside. Our Curie got there first no matter what. But the whistle does sound the first offsides of the game against EPC2. 36 minutes have been played here in half number one. A good one between Soap FC and EPC2. Both teams looking to start the season strong, get three points out of this one via a win. Of course, one point if it ends up a draw after 90 minutes. But every game is so important in this 12-game UPSL season, which kicks off here at Division II this afternoon. Cade all the way up, the drop-off to Bustos. Lysashenko plays it back to Giove. Giove. All the way across, Roberts pass too strong for Archimpong. Teams are allowed seven substitutions over the course of a game here in UPSL. We have a foul whistled against Roberts. Neither team has had a substitution in this one, although we do see a couple of players up for Soap FC. One is walking behind our Curie in Soap FC's side of things. See what's going on there. Perhaps medical reason there. Jaden McGinnis. Free kick right before the midfield stripe. Opts to play it to Deplan. Another short pass to McGinnis. Gets it back. A couple of players bumped into each other and we're going to have Baldaris whistled for a foul. Get a closer look at Ronald Villacris down and getting attended to here, three of his teammates. And again, the clock on our side will continue to move here and official time will be kept on the field so almost assuredly a minute or so of stoppage time will be added in this first half it will be once again Deplan right in the middle of the field a tough bouncer there in the middle played by EPC2 turn towards goal there's a one that goes wide. I'm not sure if that was an intended pass or whether that was a shot. Either way, it got deflected, and this will be a corner kick for EPC2. It's their first corner of the half. It's like coming down to meet it will be Conte. Actually, check that. This will be Fall taking the corner. Golden opportunity here for EPC2, their first corner kick of the season. Fall gets into it, top of the box. First head on it was Cades. It spills all the way to the sideline, and it will be EPC2 ball. Now protesting is Soap FC, but indeed it will be EPC2 ball as that was last touched by Soap FC. Rowan was intercepted by Soap, but there's another interception, middle of the field. Fall. Plays with it first. Gives it over to Conte. Conte on the give and go to Fall. No whistle here. Ball goes out of play. 
flag is in the direction of EPC2, but we're going to have another player down here in these final stages of the first half. Now, I believe that was Fall who is down on the play. And explanations for both teams here coming up from the official. Head referee, of course, attending to the injured player that is Fall down there. And looks like time has been called, and they do want the training staff to come out and attend to the injured player. So our clock will continue to roll, but right now time is out. Head coach Atiba Downs will come out to attend to his player. Long extended break here as the injured player is up to his feet. And at the result of all this, this should be a throw in in the direction of EPC2. There was no foul on the play. Looks like Fall kind of went down on the play and was stepped over. It doesn't look like he was stepped on, but just the way he fell was enough to warrant the injury now after all of this again we will have a throw in fall is out of the game so right now epc2 is playing 10 versus 11 and they'll wait for the official's word to wave fall back in the game meanwhile his head coach atiba downs is now coaching from the near sideline right where the injury happened actually it was a throw in for soap on the play they play it in the middle of the field. Dangerous pass. It was intercepted at first by Villacris and given away in the middle of the field. Bustos looking for some help. He's going to have to retreat. Not enough red and black jerseys heading up the pitch as Cade plays it the other way to Acevedo. Cade, it looks like, has... Actually, that was al -Hajj. This is Cade with the ball now. Far sideline. Backed up to Cade. Cade. Low lining bouncer. Converged on by EPC2. Broken up. And they go the other way with it. Bounced into the middle of the field. Acevedo with a first touch. Gets it in front of Jove. Jove with some real estate ahead of him. Drops off to Bustos. Bustos. And al Haj gets it, and now we're going to have a whistle as there is a player down on the far side of the field. Soap a little bit offset with the whistle, a little bit upset with the whistle. And that could have been fall again. It was fall. Now, the shorts, the number on his shorts does not match the number on his jersey. That's what has tripped me up a little bit, but... Fall gets up again on his own power. Now, he might have to go outside the pitch here. Yep, and they are sending him off, and he'll have to get waved back in. We'll keep a look at that clock, and unofficially, a little over a minute to go. We will have some stoppage time. Pass was intercepted in the middle, converged on by Conte. Conte looking to get past two defenders, cannot do so. Great job by Soap FC once again to halt the rush up the pitch. Archimpong working 1v1, losing it that time. Nice defensive play by Conte, and we will have a foul whistled against Soap. On the reset, Deplan will take his time here. Skies that one up, opposite field. It is allowed to hit turf. Closest there is Diallo, and he gets fouled going down. And another opportunity here. This time, 
to the left of our Curie, and we'll see what EPC2 decides to do with this free kick here. Will they put numbers in the box, or will they put try to put one directly on goal here? A little bit optimistic from this distance here, but we've seen shots come in. We are officially in stoppage time. Whatever is left is at the discretion of the officials. And if this goes by the wayside, we're probably looking at a scoreless first half. They'll take their time leading up into this one. Looks like it's Canty who will take it. And it's put well over everything and out of play. Shot attempt all the way, but not even close. That's not catching what he wanted out of it was Kante, and they'll go the other way. Big head of steam here for Cade as he comes down the left sideline. Looks like he held up a little bit, trying to get through the defense, and it will be a foul against Cade. Last four fouls in this game have been called against Soap FC. And now Cade will get a warning from the referee. Another free kick upcoming in the waning moments here of this first half. No score between Soap FC and EPC2. They've scrimmaged a couple of times leading up to this game. Both teams made mention of how talented the other side is and how even this game could be, and that's exactly what we've seen in these first 45. But maybe something can be added here in stoppage. Montesinos, nice running ball, puts one centered, and that one was cleared, but cleared beyond the goal line. So this will be a corner kick upcoming for Soap FC, their third corner with the half winding down. It will be Bustos to take it golden chance here. Bustos waving his arms. Baldaris is coming up. Baldaris extends, but that one was broken up. That one put inside and a leaping Benjamin is able to make the save just as the first half ends. We'll see a replay of that last attempt and what a chance it was. And we'll see it develop here. We'll pick it up exactly from where the corner was taken. There you could see the elevation and the putback. And on his back, making the best save of the first half was Benjamin to keep it locked at 0-0. So that'll do it for the first half of play. And at the half, we have no score between EPC2 and SOAP FC. We'll get you some statistics after we come back from the break. But overall, a 50-50 first half. And SOAP FC dominated possession in big chunks in this one. But EPC2 really limiting the passing lanes, especially in the final third of the field. And the score that you see on your screen is very indicative of the way this first half has gone. So we are through the first half of play. What we will do is step aside, take a break. When we come back, we will get you ready for the second half plus here of this one. Once again, your score at halftime. It's EPC 2-0 two, two, and SOAP FC 0 here as you're watching UPSL action on the PDF Sports Network. Stay with us. Attention local businesses and professionals. Isn't it time to elevate your game? Now you can advertise your business or product on PDF Sports Network. Your ad will appear on all of our broadcasts, including this one. Don't have a commercial? We'll make one for you, absolutely free. What better way to showcase your product and brand while supporting the best local sports, teams, and leagues? Call now at 732-723-8189 or visit us at pdfsportsnet.com. 
East Coast Trophies and Awards has been serving your awards needs since 1986 and is now a proud sponsor of the PDF Sports Network. From sports-specific trophies and plaques to corporate and business promotions and gifts, East Coast Trophies and Awards is your one-stop shop for all of your crowning achievements, and they always meet the right price. Contact Chris today at 848-223-7071 or visit them at www.eastcoastawards.com. Welcome back to the UPSL here on the PDF Sports Network. We are at halftime between Elite Players Center 2 and Soap FC. And you can see the score on your screen, 0-0 between these two teams. As we mentioned when we went into break, Soap FC dominating the possession in long stretches of time in this first half. But really, EPC 2 doing a good job defensively in their own end, not allowing the major mistake in order uh, to yield a goal. They have tried to use some of their counterattack to their advantage, and they've generated a little bit of offense in that side as well. But Soap FC right now has really led the possession game, but really 0-0 is every bit what the score deserves to be. A great chance at the very end for Soap FC via a corner could not register against Benjamin. We'll take down our scoreboard now and then we'll give you our stats uh, for the first half. Um, so we'll take a look at them now. As you can see, the shots and shots on goal. Um, Soap FC leading there four shots to two. Both teams, though, with just one shot on goal in the first half. And Soap FC's came as time expired in the first half forcing Benjamin, of course, to make that sprawling save, uh, backpedaling saves. Corner kicks in favor of Soap, 3-1. to one. They had two early in the game and, of course, one on that last rush up the field. One offside in this first half. That was whistled against EPC. And you take a look at the fouls. Started off, I believe, in favor of Soap for much of the half, but they actually registered the final four fouls of that first half, and they lead the foul count. 10 to 6. There have been no yellow cards. There have been no red cards in this one. So both teams, of course, playing 11 v 11. So there you have it for stats. We'll once again wait for both of these teams to get settled. They've now come to their respective benches and are getting some instruction. So we think that the second half is imminent. So what we will do is once again, we will send it to our commercial break. When we come back, we will get you ready for the second half right here live from Wagner College. No score between EPC2 and Soap FC. Stay with us. Attention local businesses and professionals. Isn't it time to elevate your game? Now you can advertise your business or product on PDF Sports Network. Your ad will appear on all of our broadcasts, including this one. Don't have a commercial? We'll make one for you, absolutely free. What better way to showcase your product and brand while supporting the best local sports, teams, and leagues? Call now at 732-723-8189 or visit us at pdfsportsnet.com. East Coast Trophies and Awards has been serving your awards needs since 1986 and is now a proud sponsor of the PDF Sports Network. From sports-specific trophies and plaques to corporate and business promotions and gifts, East Coast Trophies and Awards is your one-stop shop for all of your crowning achievements, and they always meet the right price. Contact Chris today at 848-223-7071 or visit them at www.eastcoastawards.com. Welcome back here to Wagner College. We are getting set for the second half of play. Bring our scoreboard back up. We'll get you ready for the second half. And as soon as that whistle blows, we will start the clock and count up to 90 minutes here. Once again, official time being kept on the field. The extra balls that were being used in practice are being sent to the respective sidelines. And we're going to get our second half set up here. Abbreviated halftime, about 10 minutes was taken here, obviously. Teams have switched sides, so Soap FC will go from right to left now in this second half. EPC2 in their road white jerseys will go from left to right. Whatever wind there is at Wagner is pretty much going from 
the far sideline to this near sideline. So there's no really no real advantage as far as the side of the field here. It's a picture perfect, gorgeous day at Wagner College. A little bit on the cooler side for us. Although in the sun, it is beautiful. And for the players, this is just supreme weather here. Soap will have the first touch of this half. And they will start things off here. No foul here as Soap has possession. This is Cade. Losing possession at first to Montesino. So now he works it in the middle of the field. Played over to Agbula, who checked in to this second half. Definitely have some new players on the field for the teams. We'll try to get you some of those substitutions. They're not given to us, but we'll try to get you updated. I believe Nicholas Fisherman has come in for Soap FC as well. Manny Agbula, number eight, is just has the touch right now. That pass was intended for Fisherman, but interrupted and played the other way by Alex Axel Morales. Morales gets whistled here for the foul. EPC's seventh of the game. And Soap, as they did routinely in that first half, resetting the ball and working it to the opposite side of the field. Giove plays it. From just inside midfield, they go all the way down to Cade. Cade, middle of the field, Bustos let it go, thinking that Fisherman was going to meet it. Pass was a little bit too strong, however, and taken by Diallo. Diallo all the way up the pitch and well, well offside was number 68, Max Nilkins LaFleur, and that one goes all the way out. So another offsides whistled against EPC. That's their second offsides of the game good idea that time by Diallo but well ahead of the play there's a giveaway by Bustos in the midfield but given promptly back to Soap FC one point for a tie three points for a win in UPSL Division 2 first of 12 games this season for both of these teams after today's game, Soap will be off next week and then will return in two weeks' time on the road. EPC2 will not have its bye until later in the season. There's a nice ball on the left side. Moving in, turnaround shot was blocked in front. Bustos tried to meet that one. He was taken off the ball but given away in the middle of the field. Acevedo again, nice play. Coming up to meet it is Roberts. Roberts gives it off to Agbula, who plays it off to the sideline. Archimpong back over to Agbula. Montesinos attacking that right side. Montesinos working 1v1 against Deplan. Gives it over to Bustos. Bustos was towed off the ball, and EPC2 takes it the other way. Middle of the field, Diallo. Diallo turns around towards midfield, but is taken right off the ball promptly. Agbula, long sweeping pass, onside, coming in. Great shot, was save made by Benjamin. Alhaj with the attempt on the opposite side. Agbula with a turnover. I beg your pardon, Danny Vila had that last shot. In front to Bustos, a quick tap on goal. And it was handled nicely by Benjamin. We'll get a replay of that in just a moment. As we reset here, EPC2 going all the way down the field. Foot race, Roberts able to nudge it forward to our Curie. Get a chance to see both of those shots on the replay coming up. When we have a little bit of a stoppage, we'll get you that replay. Meanwhile, Jove gets it back right at midfield, and we'll get a chance to see that replay developing. Not missing much here of live action.
Meanwhile, back to live action. Cade on the near side. Cade working it in the box. We do have a whistle. And we are going to see our first card of the afternoon. And this will be a free kick for Soap FC. And I believe that will be whistled against Diallo, the yellow card. Just make a note of that in my book and here we go on the reset. That one put towards the near side and that one was put on goal and save was made by Benjamin. So, Soap FC resets again. This is Roberts. Over to Acevedo. On the opposite side, Villa. Back over to Acevedo. Middle of the field. We have a foul whistled against Soap FC this time. And while they cue this one up, we will take a look at that last attempt there after the foul right on goal. Benjamin did a nice job of interrupting that one. Back to live action here. Soap on the opposite side. Looks like Soap here will have a nice opportunity middle of the field. Jude Lee Deplan. Lots of preparation here going into this one. Deplan will put it up on goal, but it was over the bar, and Akuri sees it go high. Good attempt and very strong leg into that last shot. So Pepsi has to reset. Middle of the field. Taking it slow here. Acevedo on the near side. Cade making a run down the sideline instead. They go over to Fisherman in the middle of the field. Fisherman bounces it up top. Looking for Agbula. He gets taken off the ball. Nice defensive play by EPC. Going the other way is Diallo. Looks to thread the ball through. And Arcuri tells his players to pull back. He will get it. EPC looking to turn defense into offense pretty quickly. We have a player down in the middle of the field. Right to the left of your screen. Seen this happen a couple of times. While we have a timeout, we'll take a short little break off of the microphone. Delayed timeout here due to the injury. Trying to get an exact number of the injured player. It was Pape Canty, the forward for EPC2, who's played a lot of the midfield as well in this one. Ball will just be placed down on the reset. And again, you see the time on your screen continuing to run, but undoubtedly that was the first of our stoppage time that will be added at the end of 90 minutes. So again, we remind you that official time is being kept on the field. Cade 
plays it back, and that one is lifted out of play. See EPC2 putting a little bit more pressure now in the SOAP defensive zone. And we have our substitution here on the far sideline. We will see the substitutes coming in. It looks like one such sub will be Justin Odomene will come in for EPC2. And he will be coming in for Abdu Diallo. So that's our first substitution. Also coming in for EPC, we will see who else is coming in. We have to pick up a number here when his back is towards us. Long throw in. Other player that came in was Nathan Carpio for EPC2. Matches the two substitutions that were made by Soap that were made at halftime. Fisherman and Agbula both coming in. Acevedo near sideline to Cade. Mohamed Cade gives it back to Acevedo. Very busy, the defensive pairing of Roberts and Acevedo. Here comes Soap now the other way. Good defensive play that time. Leon McPhee, one of his first touches in this second half. Acevedo again, giving it over to Fisherman. Fisherman back in towards the middle of the field. Jove. Jove plays it opposite side. Ball looked to get it over the defense to Danny Villa, but only Benjamin is there after the two rub shoulders. Just over 10 minutes into the second half. Offense has picked up a little bit in this one. Soap up to seven total shots in this game. Three on goal. We have an offsides whistled against EPC. That's their third offside whistle of the game. At the midfield line, that is a blazer of a pass. Montesino intended for Fisherman, but too strong. Cade being interfered with by Carpio, who had just come in. Another foul whistled against EPC. It's their ninth foul of the afternoon. No card shown. Actually, looked like a warning shown. Not sure. Lost the line of sight there here in our booth. But Bustos will have a free kick here, about the 15-yard line, to the extreme right of Benjamin. He surveys the area in front of him. Bustos said he'd love to get a goal, maybe two in this game. Soap FC puts it far sideline, swatted at. Benjamin caught a piece, and the putback by Jove was put well high. So technically the first shot, as we'll get a replay of those, but the first shot by Bustos would be counted as a shot. Second one on the would-be, of course, put back was far wide and didn't present much of a challenge. We'll take a look at it once we can here, once we get a break in play. Interrupted there. Here comes EPC the other way. Unfolding attack. Above everything, another offside whistle. And we'll take another look while we have the offside flag up at that last replay and that last flurry. You could see Bustos getting that right foot into it. It was a sharp angle shot. Looks like Benjamin might have overran it at first. And then on the putback, Jove just missed it well high and wide. Here's another sweeping ball. Looked to get it over the defense. Could not find Fisherman, although he does follow it up there. He swept off the ball. 
And now it's taken by McPhee. McPhee, long would-be pass up the pitch to Odomene, but too strong and out of play. Offense has definitely picked up here in this one. Soap FC with five shots in this first 15 minutes of the second half. Four of them on goal. That already dwarfs what they were able to do in the first half as play has definitely opened up. Foul whistled against Soap this time. Shots are nine to three total. Four one on goal, both in favor of Soap FC. And again, another sustained injury timeout here as it looks to be Canty down. He's been down a couple of times in this one. Looks like his left wrist is being worked on. But Canty is up under his own power. More players getting loose for EPC2 as well. Fitness will certainly be a factor here in these opening games of the season as well. Long pass down the far sideline, too strong. And another ball out of play, and our Curie will tee it up for the goal kick. Both of these teams mentioned they've been on the practice pitch for six months getting set for this game. But really, very hard to simulate a 90-minute contest against an opponent in front of you. 50-50 ball, middle of the field. A little bit of a strong first touch that time by Villacris. And Soap able to get it back, temporarily at least. Now they get it back again with Jove in the middle. They reverse field over to Cade, Mohamed Cade. Very busy in this one on the near sideline. Backs it up to Acevedo. Michaels had a very eventful game today as well. Archimpong in the middle of the field. Able to get it far sideline. And they work it back to Roberts. Bola. Oh, it's a Jove. He gets it back. Looking in the middle, towards the middle of the field to Montesinos. He has kicked off the ball, but there'll be a throw in the other way. Sixty-second minute here of this one. And they spring out. Villa gains the box. A little too strong on that touch, though. It goes all the way in to Benjamin, who's able to clear the box and punt it down the other end of the field. High bouncer. Roberts is able to play. Over to Achimpong. Up the sideline. Villa. Back heel touch. Played down the sideline and out of play. Deplan. Getting it back is Jove. Jove surveys the field. It's given a lot of space. Puts it on the lip of the box. EPC touches it first. We do have a whistle here. Foul was called. EPC doesn't like the call. Foul number 11 for them in this game. Now matches the 12 that Soap has. But here's another free kick from the opposite end of the field this time. Agbola will take it. Low liner. Top of the box is played. Now Soap wants a handball. They won't get it. And there's one that's turned towards goal just wide. Now, Soap wanted a handball, and maybe we'll even get to see the developments of that off of this free kick. Let's see what develops here. Yeah, we'll take a look at this replay. We'll see the low liner there. There's where the intended handball was. Soap wanted the call, but look at the putback shot. Nice look at that one just wide. We have another substitution here for EPC2. Coming out of the game was Pape Conte. 
Don't have a number of who entered yet. We'll get that for you. In just a few moments, that pass up the middle of the pitch didn't find its mark. Furman Andrade Valo was the player who entered the game. Here's a cross from the opposite end over the outstretched fingertips of Benjamin all the way down the opposite end. It is held up by EPC, but turned over. Nice job by Fisherman to get in the way of that. He loses the ball, but he gets fouled. And we're going to have another free kick opportunity from the wing here, and another great opportunity coming up for Soap FC. Sixty-fifth minute, twentieth minute of this second half. We have had some stoppage time here, but another golden opportunity here. Bustos lined up right now with Cade. Bustos will take it right in the middle of the box. Benjamin doesn't have to move much to make that interruption. Skied up. First touch by EPC. Soap FC does a good job of getting to that one. Fisherman gets to this, tries to thread it through the defense, can't do it, and some physical play. Fisherman gets guilty of the foul. 13th foul whistled against Soap FC here this afternoon. This play continues to intensify. And you can hear the wind picking up in our microphones as well. Now blowing... Again, once again from the far sideline into the near sideline. Into us, if you would. Mohamed Cade. And a foul whistled against EPC that time as Odomene used too much body. Abula tried to thread it through. And another foul whistled against EPC. Jove will set things up just inside his own half of the field. Now they gain the midfield stripe, and this is Villa. Villa, some time to operate. Drops it off to Archimpong. Try to go across the field to Bustos. Nice pass to Bustos. Bustos wants to find the middle. His shot was blocked in front. Cade, the first one there. Cade with two white jerseys on him. Ops out. Acevedo back to Cade. Cade, short pass, interrupted, was Bustos. And another uh, advantage rule whistled in favor of EPC that time. I believe that foul was on Jove. Team sensing an important swing here in this game. EPC sending numbers down in Soap's direction. Lift it up. Ricochets off of a couple of players right into the arms of our Curie. Odomene had the touch. We're not going to count that as a shot on goal, at least not in our booth. There is glancing blow off the head of Odomene, and we have a foul whistled against Montesinos here. Well, first half did not have a lot of stops and starts. This second half sure does. So we approach the 70th minute mark here. And once again, EPC2 will take its time. Drawing up this free kick here, getting numbers well into Soap's end of the field. Line drive kick, top of the box, won by Soap, and Bustos plays it all the way up the field. Montesinos with a head of steam. Montesinos, left of goal, has a couple of players developing to his right. I don't think he saw Agbulo, who was wide open and unmarked on the right side. It would have been tough for Montesinos to see him and elevate that ball, but Soap had the numbers. Try to get a sense of seeing Agbula on screen. We'll get to it in just a moment once we have a break. But Acevedo takes over for now. Plays it in the middle of the field. And that one's out of play. Now take a look 
at the top most portion of your screen. You could see Agbula left unmarked there on that last attempt. Not to be there. Just missed him. Rosters go blowing all the way out. And here comes Benjamin to meet this ball at the top of the box. And a little late getting there was Villa and Montesinos. Soap knocking on that door. But nice job by Mendel Benjamin to really chase down the attacker there, meet him at the top of the box. ZPC resets. Tough first touch. And the ball goes out of play. Officially above 70 minutes here. Final 20 of this one plus stoppage time. We do figure there is at least two to three minutes of that coming at the end of this game. Cade, nice weaving pass into Bustos. Bustos, nice right-footed pass to Montesinos. Montesinos, quick touch to Fisherman. That was interrupted. Nice job by the defense. Touched on here by McPhee. McPhee wants to work it middle of the field, skies it. Jove's there first. Roberts now the opposite way. Roberts. Over to Acevedo. His pass. Too much mustard on it. Goes out of bounds. Acevedo did not like that pass. From Roberts. The giveaway here. McPhee will reset. Looking to weave it through traffic was Valo, but he gets lost off the ball. Good touch and just beyond. The sideline there, Bustos, a little frustrated there. Both teams just not being able to string together the full lineup of passes here. This is Fisherman who's been busy since checking in at halftime. Jove, middle of the field. Archimpong to Agbula. Agbula wants to get into a foot race and now challenges Villacres on the ball. Far sideline. Agbula stops. Gets to survey the field. Looks middle, Archimpong. Threading pass to Montesinos. He was offside. The flag was up. And Benjamin was there to interrupt things anyway. But for the first time in this game, Soap FC called for an offsides. And EPC with the quick reset. No score here in a game where you just have a feeling that one goal could do it. Either way, foul on Soap FC, 16th foul of the game for them, 13 for UPC2 in this game. And we'll see if the protest nets a warning for Bustos, and I believe he has just been warned. Once again, this will be stoppage time added on at the end. In a scoreless game here in the season opener for both teams. Lifted well high. That's a good flick of a head that time by LaFleur. So EPC with their second shot of the second half. They have four in total today. Only one on goal. Curry's made the one save. Benjamin has made five saves in his half of the stat sheet. Pong couldn't thread that one through, but on the 50-50 ball, Giove comes down with it. Far sideline, and Soap has some numbers here. Cade in the middle of the field, couldn't complete the pass to Fisherman. We do have a whistle, however, and it will go against Soap FC. have the far linesman looking to get the attention of the head referee. I think finally did to back that ball up at the 20-yard line here on the Wagner College football field, named after Walt Hamiline, longtime athletic director and football coach here at Wagner College. Agbula skies one high to Montesinos. He is shoulder to shoulder. And we have a foul. As Diallo earns that one and 
Montesinos gets whistled for the foul. Will a team be able to strike in this one? No score. Well played game. Both teams here. Fisherman with a good interception. Weaves one through one defender. Couldn't get through the second wave. And now we have a yellow card that has been issued to number 45, Leon McPhee, who entered during halftime. Diallo has the other yellow. And we've seen some good things develop out of this. These free kicks in the second half. Soap FC with five shots in the second half. Four of them have been on goal. Giove skied one. That was maybe even the best chance coming off of a rebound off of one of these free kicks. Montesinos fixing to get into this one. Montesinos. Threads one through on the two hops. Benjamin makes the save. So Montesinos was able to get it through the wall, but unfortunately Benjamin had great position on it. As we get back into live action, Montesinos still with it. Montesinos threads one through, was looking in the direction of Bustos. Nice defensive play that time for EPC to interrupt. We'll keep it here with live action. As we are going to have some substitutions coming in, and while they do, we'll go back and see a replay of that free kick by Montesinos. You can see it does get through, but Benjamin read it beautifully, saw it through, and was able to make the save. So try to pick up some numbers here for these Substitutions looks like coming in will be Brody Rettel for Soap FC, along with Albert Asamoah, wearing number 99. Easy to distinguish him from the lineup with those nines on the bottom back of his jersey as we have another foul whistled against Soap FC, which at the very least prevents EPC from counterattacking the way they would have liked. Montesinos did not like the call. Officially, 13 minutes, uh, unofficially 13 minutes to go. Here's a nice pass, and it's flicked on with the head for EPC. Save is made by our Curie rather routinely. First shot on goal of the period for EPC2. Rettel, one of his first touches. Gets it over to Jove. Jove plays it right back to Rettel. Rettel wants to get into a foot race. And shoulders EPC player off of the ball. And looks like he will get whistled for a foul. And will be shown. Will he be shown a card? We'll see. A warning. A warning only for Rettel. Who literally just walked into the game. Got into a foot race there down the sideline. Went shoulder to shoulder with the defender and got a foul whistled against him for it. Soap, which had 10 fouls in the first half, has 10 here in the second. With some time to spare here. Cade, near side. He's been busy today. Gives over to Montesinos, also played a strong game. Asamoa. Asamoa back heels it. Foul whistled against the EPC. Their ninth foul of the half, and Asamoa goes down, clutching at his ankles. But right in the area of the field, again, where Soap has shown that they can put one directly on goal or maybe towards that back post and with someone to meet it. So options here for the group, and they are discussing it right now. Agbula is in that huddle. So is Montesinos and Rettel. It looks like Agbula is leaving the area. Rettel and Montesinos are there. It looks like Montesinos will be the one to take it here. Four-man wall. Montesinos can't push it through. Ricochets off of a couple of defenders, and here comes EPC2 the other way. Diallo playing it up top, looking for Valo. Valo 
gets swept off the ball, but they'll be able to throw it in a few pa paces closer as we approach the 80-minute mark and unofficially 10 to go here in a very quick-moving 90 minutes. Far sideline, EPC getting it through, played promptly out, given up at the top of the box. There's one that's put sky high and out of play. Looked like that was more of a pass attempt that time than a shot. From the defender for EPC. Meanwhile, Soap works it the other way. Haven't seen a lot of really extended attack time for EPC too, but they have had their chances as well. EPC gets in the way of that one, sends it right back up towards midfield. Cade has to play to Montesinos. Montesinos allowed to play in space. Arshampong the other way. Tough first touch, but he does get it back. Plays it in towards the middle of the field, Montesinos. Montesinos plays it to an overlapping Villa. Villa in front, put, tries to put one across. Benjamin is there to interrupt. Strong play by Benjamin up close on what was certainly one of the golden opportunities of the game here for Soap. Turnover, given up, and now we have a late whistle coming in on what could be whistled an advantage rule here. Well, we'll get to see that replay in just a few moments. As play is out right now, we will go to that replay. And you can see the overlapping pass by Villa. Villa obviously looking in front to feed Asamoa, but couldn't get it through Benjamin. I want to see that once again, just that brilliant pass, and we'll see it in a little bit of slower motion here for you. You can see that overlapping pass from Villa. And it developed from there. So we are back to live action here. And now Soap has some numbers. Montesinos tried to put one over top of the defense. Couldn't do it. No handball whistled on that one. It looked as if McGinnis had a hand on it, perhaps inadvertently. And that one is kept in. On the far sideline, nice play for EPC. They thread one through, and now we're going to have a whistle and a card the other way. And I don't think there was any choice that time. As Jove had no choice but to spill the attacker. And we are going to have a golden opportunity now on the opposite side. Taking it will be Villacris. Two-man wall. Now Giove comes in to help out. Should mention that Anthony Sarmiento has checked in for Soap FC. Big chance here. Villacris will get into this one. Skies it up top. Arcuri got a fist on it. It comes out and put over top of everything and almost nearly out of the stadium itself on the putback. So no harm done that time on the attempt by Bacara. EPC stands firm at two shots on goal in this game. Actually three on that first initial shot that was punched away. And inside of 10 minutes now, every opportunity or quality chance becomes critical. Catching up to it is Cade working 1v1 against McPhee. They continue to battle. McPhee comes out with it. McPhee towards the corner flag. Wants to race in towards the goal line and he can't meet it. Soap takes it back. Trying to work it up towards midfield. It's extended time in their defensive half. Jove didn't get all of that pass, but it is able to meet Sarmiento. They race over to the left sideline and spilled promptly out. Good defensive play that time. As we have another whistle here, and we'll have a throw in. Sarmiento 
yields the ball, actually. Maybe there was a foul on the play. Yeah, so there was a foul on the play before the throw-in. Interesting opportunity here as Soap FC gets more and more bodies in the box. That pass attempt was blocked, and we do have a whistle as perhaps cheating on the, the wall that was set up. Allows Soap to start quickly. This is Villa. Villa with a window, puts one through. It's headed towards the top of the box, and it will be a handball whistled outside the box. And how about this for an opportunity for Soap FC? From the right hash mark, they will line it up at the football 12-yard line. So just about 20 yards, 25 yards from pay dirt. Soap FC will have a golden opportunity, and you can see them strategizing now how to build that wall. Benjamin barking out some orders. And the conference going on here for Soap. Agbula in the area along with Montesinos, Giove, and Rettel. And only really two Soap players in the goal box, Sarmiento and Villa. And Rettel puts one in! Top corner shelf! Didn't even expect him to take it. He does, and he puts one into the back of the net. Goal scored by Soap FC in the 86th minute. And what a quality goal it was. They looked like they were still discussing it. And it was Rettel who met it and put one through. Let's take another look at it. You could see Rettel come in on your screen right now. And just a perfect shot. I mean, you're just not going to get any better than that. A perfect shot, a golden opportunity, and Soap FC has a 1-0 lead with, you could see it on your screen, close to three minutes remaining. Now we will have, and we should have plenty of stoppage time in this game. But with a 1-0 stranglehold here, Soap with an extraordinary opportunity here to begin their UPSL season 1-0 on their fifth shot on goal of the half and their sixth of the game. Brody Rettel, the goal scorer in the 86th minute. Gorgeous goal it was. And We'll probably see that goal again at some point when we have a stoppage, but really, Mendel Benjamin, no movement in goal for that one. There's just nothing you can do. That's a goal on any level of football that you will see. Now, we do, do have a foul here about the 40-yard line. Teams come together. Get another look at that. Replay upcoming. And once again, slow down. You can see the reaction in goal by Benjamin. There's just nothing you can do there. Perfectly placed. And Soap FC, their first goal in organization history, goes to Brody Reddle, who actually had just checked in the game five or six minutes previous. And Soap FC now with a 1 0 lead in the dying moments of this game, another foul whistled against EPC. We have 18 fouls in this game. And another opportunity from this area of the field. Now that last free kick was taken about 20 yards away from goal. This one will be about 28 yards, close to 30 yards away from goal. And you could see the Soap FC players conferencing there, Montesinos, Rettles in the neighborhood as well. The wall being built here by EPC2. See what happens here on this one. That one is put on goal and over. So good attempt that time. That one just over the bar. And it will 
Remain one nothing here with 30 seconds to go. We will stop the clock at 90 minutes and, of course, let stoppage time play out on its own. Asamoa. It's a handball whistled against EPC. But if you're Soap FC now, there is absolutely no urgency and no reason to push up unnecessarily if you don't have to. EPC2 has to force the issue here, and you can see the urgency now being placed on them. Otomene gave chase, but here's Acevedo now in space where he's been brilliant today. Montesinos back to Acevedo. Up top, try to get it over the defense. Cade in the neighborhood, but first one there is Deplan. Deplan now sees it go out of bounds, and a quick reset wants to be had here. So we are through 90 full minutes here at Wagner College. We are officially in stoppage time. Anything here will be scored in the 90th minute. And EPC2 absolutely needs one. Nice move, try and gain the box, and we do have a foul, and it's whistled against EPC. Again, needing to force the issue any way possible that time. Good job by Roberts to earn that foul called. Taking his time. Roberts skies that one up. Gains midfield and then some. Asamoah plays it off the bounce. This is Rettle. Rettle in a foot race. Punches one closer to Montesinos. Far side. And he just missed it wide. Soap very close to doubling their lead on that last rush up. All starts on that tough bouncer. There's one in close and a save made by Benjamin. But we'll get a chance to see that last developing play there. Rettle in the foot race. Nice little tap pass over to Montesinos. You could see what he was thinking about. And it just went wide. Sweeping tackle that time made in the middle of the field. Not missing much here as EPC looks for that last gasp. We are in stoppage time. Soap with a 1-0 lead over EPC2. Asamoah with the touch. Plays it. Far side to Roberts. Official looks down for the first time at his watch. Skied up. Benjamin couldn't play it. That one spills out. Agbula with it now. Can take his time. Montesinos punches it, and it is blocked in front. Great team save. Unselfish play by Soap FC. Agbula had the first attempt. He passed it off to Montesinos, and what a great play made defensively to thwart that. It will be a corner kick in favor of Soap FC. As you can see, the replay here, Agbula looked like he might have had an opportunity, sends it off to Montesinos, and what a gorgeous save made in front there. As That'll do it. That is full time here from Wagner College. Unbelievable flurry at the end, but this one indeed goes final. And how about that? Soap FC on a goal in the 86th minute by Brody Reddle scores a 1-0 win over Elite Players Center 2. That's a heck of a way to start your season as I will tally up some official stats here before we let you go. But just an amazing job on the opening game of the season for Soap FC. Really couldn't have drawn it up any better. A 1-0 win here on home turf. The final statistics in this one, Soap FC with 10 total shots, 6 on goal. EPC 2, 7 total shots, 3 on goal. Corner kicks were 4-1 to one in favor of Soap FC. Offsides 4-1. to one. EPC 2 guilty of the 4 offsides. Total fouls in this game, Soap with 20 and EPC 2 with 19. Before we let you go here on the PDF Sports Network, we want to uh, give you some of what is upcoming here on our network. We thank you so much for tuning in here. Next weekend, the crew 
will be at Veronico Sports Center in Roselle Park, New Jersey, where the AAL2's Jersey Bearcats will take on the Carolina Predators uh, pregame show at 5.45, kickoff at 6 p.m. The Jersey Bearcats defending their AAL2 championship arena football. You've never seen anything like it right here on the PDF Sports Network. That should be awesome. And then three weeks from now, we will have not one but two football games. The Women's Football Alliance, New York Wolves, the defending champions of the WFA, they will go against the Detroit Venom at 5.30 p.m. And AAL2 action. We'll see the Jersey Bearcats take on the Steel City Stampede. Approximate time for that one, 5.45. So got a lot of great things upcoming. And we do want to let you know that we want to be back here and cover some more Soap FC football. Of course, we may or may not be back for some of the other uh, home events for Soap FC this season. But if you've enjoyed today's broadcast, we're so glad that you have, and we hope to be back soon to, to cover more Soap FC coverage. This was a very special broadcast for us here on PDF because it was an all Pizzuto broadcast for the first time in our history. Uh, my daughter, Sabrina Pizzuto, joined us uh, today. She was working camera, and she was our engineer for the, for the second half of play. And my daughter, Liliana Pizzuto, was working as our engineer, and she was on camera for the second half of play. So a full Pizzuto broadcast, so uh, special it is for me. Uh, and, of course, uh, from all of us here at PDF Sports Network, we wish you a great rest of the day, a great rest of the afternoon. What a game we had here. Soap FC on their home field score a one nothing winner over the Elite Player Center 2 team. From all of us here at PDF Sports Network, thank you for joining us. Thank you for following Soap FC and the UPSL right here on the PDF Sports Network.